Hello and welcome to hobby vlog number 28. Thanks for watching and if you're not yet subscribed please do so and don't forget to ding the bell so that YouTube will inform you whenever one of my videos goes live. It's been a good week, I've got a lot done, I've been working very hard towards the Battle Games of Middle Earth which won't be in this vlog as it happens but is due for publication next Tuesday. Uh, I've also managed to just this second just before I filmed this I've finished Rosie's Hill which I'm very pleased with that's going to go on the wall um, when I've found some another spray bottle because my sealant spray bottle is dead it's sealed up <laughs> uh, and I've done a few other bits and pieces as well so it is quite a good uh, long hopefully long video but I haven't edited it yet so I will find out with you how long it goes so I will stop rambling because I am rambling and I will see you again at the end I would like to paint the houses for the Joan of Arc scenario. Uh, so I'm going to show you two things as part of this little clip. First of all, this is a little hint and a little tip of how, how to do, uh, make a really easy handle for painting. What it is, is a um, clip, fun enough, which I can open slide inside and it holds it really really securely so that's what I use for the three small buildings as you can see the church is larger and what I've done is I've turned one of my other clamps into a pusher clamp and that means I can easily insert it in there and then using the clamp trigger mechanism I can expand it outwards and it will hold the church so those are, that's one tip I wanted to give you for how you might find it easier to actually hold these while you're painting them, which obviously is a bit of an issue because they're not going to go on a traditional painting handle. The second thing that I'm going to do now, and what I'm going to do first before I start painting, is I need to have some blanks for these buildings because very shortly I'm going to be putting down some air dry clay or filler or whatever I decide to use and rolling over it to get the cobblestones and I need to have the buildings to um, be able to have space for the buildings to drop them in and pull them out again and I don't want to put the, the buildings themselves into that material to do the template so what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw around each of these onto this piece of card cut that out and then when I do the actual uh, village area with the cobbles I can make use of these templates to make sure that, uh, that I've got a space for the buildings to drop into and I will keep these, I'll label them up and keep them uh, because as I do more and more of these terrain builds, then probably I'll need them again. So I'm going to get that done now, um, and I will actually invite you along for the painting process. I'm, I think I'm going to do that on camera, maybe whether I do it all on camera or just bits and pieces, I'm not sure, but I will invite you along to show you how I go about painting each of these buildings, uh, and I might do those as separate build videos as well. But anyway, onwards. Okay, so this could... <coughs> Next step could go wrong, and if it does, I'll be quite irritated because it could destroy one of my Green Stuff World rollers. So what I'm going to be working on is the cobbled area for the village. So if you remember, I have got the cardboard templates for the church, which will go like that. And then there's a large house in this area and then there's two small houses in here. So what I'm planning on doing is I have some wood filler. This is just locally bought wood filler, look there. You see, kit zadurvo v tsviat. There we are, and it's dov, dup, which is pine. But it doesn't matter, it's gonna get painted. Apologies for my terrible, terrible pronunciation if any Bulgarian speakers are watching or listening, they've probably just turned off in shock. Anyway, I am struggling to learn the language, but I'm trying. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use these pallets, knives, to get this uh, wood filler out and spread it on. And then once I've spread it on, I will roller it with the Green Stuff World roller. And then once I've done that, I will cut out the area for the template. And I have not practiced this because, well, how long have you been watching my channel for? I like making mistakes live on camera, live on camera. I'm hoping it's not a mistake. I'm hoping that this works out well. So anyway, I will get this spread out, pop some music on, 
that's not stuck down very well, if at all. And we'll glue that as well. Um, and I'll be back when I'm about to do the uh, about to do the roller ring. So let's see how well this works out. There we are. So that is was the whole pot. <laughs> I'll zoom in a bit. And now we will try out with this roller. So let's see if it works. And once I've done that, then I will cut out the shape for the church. Hopefully this will just work. It is quite loose. It doesn't seem to be all that dry. I have finished the pot. I have two more, fortunately. So um, let's hope that this works. It sticks. It's sticking. It's sticking. It's not working. Mm. It's too sticky right now, so it's lifting up. Right, I'm going to stop the video and have a think, and have a bit of a play, and come back when I have a better idea when I've washed my roller. I had a bit of a thought. It's not been all that long. I've washed the the roller and it's absolutely fine. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut my losses on this. I'm not going to waste effort on a material which is clearly not going to work. So I'm not going to throw away or waste this. I've always had the plan that I was going to use filler to go around the edges and just kind of like put in a contour. So instead of spending time on that part, what I'll do is I'll go around now and recover what I can from that area and just contour in the edges of all the tiles and all of the areas. And I probably won't bother even putting music on because this will probably take quite a long time, as you can see, and will just be a very long and boring section of music watching me scrape up wood filler and move it around on the board. And what I'll do for this area is I will actually use air dry clay because that's what it's for. So once I've finished this process, then I'll be back and we'll have another go at that cobbled area, but this time using air dry clay. So I'll stop the camera now and I'll be back when I have something more to show you. It's been a, it's been, I always love failing on camera. At least it's a, a learning process, but Green Stuff World on wood filler, on wood, is not gonna work, so there we are. Consider that a free lesson. This finally dried. I've been left it outside for quite a long time and the condensation that was inside the clear area also evaporated. I've got some holes in the clear area now, which is a bit annoying, but lesson learned. I need to, if I'm gonna seal something like that, and there's a lesson for you as well, if you're gonna seal something like this, then make sure it's absolutely dry before you put your clear plastic on. But it is still gonna be fine, everything looks great. What you can see here are the two little kiddies that are gonna be placed somewhere around in this area. I'm not 100% sure where yet, but that's gonna be the next thing after this. Because what I'm about to do now is I'm going to be applying my flocks and doing some static grass work and putting tufts on and all that sort of nice dressing, which is the bit that I really enjoy. So I'm just gonna get stuck in with that using my normal uh, technique. I'll leave the camera running, but I'll turn the microphone off and put some music on and let's get this done.
you can see that the wood filler, the first application is on and is dried nicely, so that's good. Now we're going to do round two attempt of the cobblestones. So I have my das clay <clears throat> and what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll it out so it's thin uh, into the space I've got. Then I'm going to imprint the cobblestone on it um, and I will also cut out the shape for the buildings that are going to go on. So this is two houses, this is the church and this is the large farmhouse um, and then I'll PVA and put it down and leave it to dry. So that's my idea. <laughs> Live on camera again, let's see if it works. So we're just gonna roll this flat first of all. This is not enough clay to do the whole thing, but I've got plenty, I've got lots of packets. I was sensible and I went and bought lots before Christmas, well before this whole corona craziness started. There we are, so that's gonna be good there. Might need a little bit more clay. Just one second, I'll just pause. Okay, I'm back, I've cut some more clay out. Um, so what I'll do is I'll combine that all in. What I'm trying to do here is just half of, the, of this area because I want to have it with a distinct divide between each building property because they're actually different sections that's how the game works in hexes and also in sections and so we don't want them to be too we want them to be quite obviously different i'll probably do that with a little fence or with a little wall as well with a little gate in it and that'll be part of the fun of this project but but also i'm going to do it so it's a bit more obvious by actually having separate clay areas. So that's what I'm working on doing now. So let me get that rolled out nice and flat to roughly the shape I need. What I'll now do is get the Green Stuff World Roller and imprint the impression. Good. So what we'll do now is we'll get our small house template and we'll set it on roughly where we want it to be and we'll get ourselves a sculpting tool. We'll get ourselves a sculpting tool as I say <clears throat> and we will cut that out. There we are, so that's the shape. So now I will carefully come through and finish cutting and lift this out of the middle. And that's our first building in. And what I'll then do, when this is done, like so, there we are, put that back in the box. Oh, one second, my phone is ringing. Apologies for that, domestic call uh, about a strimmer as it happens. <laughs> I do live the dream. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to work out roughly where I want this edge to be. Then again it doesn't really matter. But I do want it to be defined so I'm going to just carve that out like so and remove that bit of the clay and we'll use that for the next section. There we are. How about that? So that can go back in there. And then this, that's roughly right. So the final thing that I'm gonna do now is grab my PVA, which actually is outside with the builders. This is a very badly organized clip. Um, and I'm gonna grab my PVA and glue that down. And then what I'll do is I will, um, actually, you know what, I'm gonna lift that out and I'm gonna roll all the rest in um, because one thing that I don't wanna do is be rolling over the top of it. So I'll get the others done to this stage get the PVA and glue them down. I'll stop this clip now because it's very disorganized, but you can see the idea. And this seems to be working a lot better than the wood filler. That's all of those done and cut. What I'm now gonna do is spread PVA all over the area and then drop them in place and then leave it to dry. So we will just do that with the PVA. It doesn't need to have too much, but it does need to have a good covering. We'll then get a wet brush and spread the PVA around. 
and then I'll put each of these sections in place and leave it to go. It didn't take me too long, it was a much better idea that than the original one with, with filler, I can tell you. The reason why we're doing this with PVA, if you're wondering, is that clay does not have any actual adherence, it's not sticky. It dries and then it'll peel off the wood, it won't actually, won't actually connect, make any connection. So the PVA is a good way of making sure that the clay actually sticks, it's actually a glue. So there we are, very quickly spread that around and then let's start dropping in these sections and hopefully I've not made any mistakes. So first of all this one because it's the most delicate, as you can see it's not perfect, not perfectly cut but it should be alright. Um, move that away a little bit from there, so you want a little path down the edge, there we are, that's that. Now we'll drop the church in, which goes in here, and again anything that's not quite perfect we can very easily trim off. Then we'll put the top small farmhouse thing in, sit that in, and again it will dry, there we are, and finally this section. There we are. So that now can be left to dry and I'm pretty pleased with that. So there's a little bit of trimming to be done here which I missed last time. Just around this area. There we are. Just take that off. Done. And here. Take that off. Done. Okay, cool. So we'll let that dry and then we can come back and we'll be at the painting stage. That was, this will be left for probably several hours, if not tomorrow, not sure. That was the correct way to do that technique. This has dried, which is really cool. So now what I'm going to be doing is some more of the wood filler and going around filling in the cracks because um, I didn't want to put too much on before and just building that back up and then the, when that's dried I'll sand it down and then it'll be time to paint. So I'm not going to run the camera because you've seen me do this once before but I'm just going to go around and apply filler so that everything is smooth and it's ready for painting. This is now dried and I'm ready for the next step which is going to be making use of the 13th ever <laughs> static grass applicator, pro static grass applicator made by WW Scenics which I'm pretty amazed that was what I happened to accidentally buy it so early on and a bunch of static grasses that I've got from Luke's APS. So what I'll be doing, and I'll do just one application and then stop the camera because it's going to be a bit fiddly with me getting in the way um, and I want to get this done as quick as I can because I'm Oh, quite a long way behind on a few projects, <laughs> is I'm going to uh, make use of the specific fast tack glue from uh, WWS, uh, World War Scenics, War World Scenics, could never remember. Um, and we're going to add on some, this is all very short, two millimeter static grass. So first of all, I'm going to go for the dead static grass because I'm going to start up around here because that's going to be the easiest for you to see, especially if I zoom in on that bit which I shall do now very quickly, hopefully without it being too sickening inducing. There we are, so I'm going to put some dead static grass around in this area here which you can see. So the first thing will be to put the static grass into the static grass applicator. I keep these in quadruple clip boxes because the last thing I want is to spill and lose any. Because while his prices are good there's no point in throwing it away. So I won't put too much in, because I'm not going to use very much dead static grass, but it is going to be the first one, as I say. Clip that back in, don't cut the corners, and put the lid back on the static grass applicator. I'll then apply some of the glue in the areas roughly around where I want it to go. And what I will do is I will then spread it out just with the tip of my finger as I'm pouring it. Now there's two different techniques here and it does very much depend on what you're looking to achieve. If you're looking to achieve big, bold, tufty grass, then pour this on and leave it clumped and maybe um, there'll be another build at some point where it's what I'm looking for and you'll see that. 
but for this I'm really not looking for it to be a big bold and clumpy I'm looking for it to be a little bit more uh, sparse and realistic than that so with that applied what we'll do is we'll turn the static grass applicator on we'll apply our grounding and then we'll shake and this is not very good YouTube because you can't really see but it picks up the static grass and stands it on end now as I say it's going to be a bit fiddly because of this tree being in the way but I'll stop there because I'm going to have to fettle around a little bit but that has now been uh, is now in place and if we were now to upend that the static grass that I want will stay there and the rest of it will fall back into a receptacle where I can reuse it so I'm going to get on with the rest of that uh, do the whole of this model and I'll come back later to show you what it looks like there we are that's done so I did it with starting off with the lightest so with the spring at the bottom going through summer autumn is around the back and then as you saw the dead grass is at the front and I'm really pleased with how that looks that's just given that little bit more fullness and depth and also still kept that variation and variety that was what I'm looking for so before I do anything else I'm going to let that dry so I'll leave that overnight and have some other things to do to that before it's finished but it's now really 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 close to done uh, so yeah we're not far off at all very very cool all of my wood filler has now dried so what I'm going to do is grab some sandpaper and sand down the roughness that is on where I've put the filler so I will turn the microphone off because it will be a bit of a nasty sound and get a little bit of that done and pop some music on for you That sanded down nicely, certainly enough, nice and smooth everywhere where I want it to be smooth and a bit rough, where I think I might end up painting it a little bit of rocks. So yeah, what I'm going to do now is take it downstairs and spray paint it black all over. So just get some car primer paint and spray paint it black. It might take a couple of coats um, and I'll be back once that's finished, once I'm happy with the spray colour um, to do the next step. All of this priming is now done, so now I'm ready to start working on the actual scenicking. It doesn't look very exciting at the moment, but it will do very shortly. So the first thing I'm going to do is work on divisions between each region, each area, what their types are, and so that will involve things like stone walls, things like rivers or tracks or whatever. So I'm not going to be looking particularly at doing much uh, static grassing or whatever, but I will be putting in some ploughed fields, um, some stone walls, like I've just said, some tracks and some streams. So I'm going to get the map up. I'm going to start playing around with it and putting in some, uh, some of those elements. And when I come to something that I'd like to show you, then I'll bring the camera back on, but I won't have it running for most of it while I'm actually doing my evaluation and working out and planning. Uh, but I'll bring you along when I'm doing something that I think that might be interesting to share. Okay, the first section that I'm going to look at is this section here. Now on the map, this is a field that's split into three. And in the hexagon, it's split like that. However, with the creative way that I've done it, uh, I can do it in a slightly more natural way. 
The other thing to pay attention to is the section that's just to the uh, ed, uh, to this side of it, and also the other sections that surround it. So, because of how the Joan of Arc rules work, you need to be aware of movement limitations. And while this is adjacent, this isn't. So you need to make so I need to make sure that what I'm doing actually supports that. So what I'm going to do to divide this field up here and maintain the relationship between this hexagon and this hexagon, which is here, is I'm gonna run, this is going to be the next section over here, and I'm gonna run my stone wall at the kind of base or halfway up this rise, and I'm also gonna run the stone wall down the center of this section. That will divide three sections up, and it is from this section that you have access to this area here, which has the bone setter on it, two trees, and a little bush. I hope that made sense and it wasn't too confusing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get some PVA glue onto my, uh, onto my plastic, onto my plate. There we are, so we have some PVA glue. I have a cocktail stick and hopefully not getting to in the way of the camera too much, but if I do, I apologize. What I'm gonna do is run a bead of this PVA in the area that I want to have my wall. There we are. We have our PVA in place. What I then have just up here is my number two builder's sand, which looks a bit like that. So that's not the finest sand that I have, but it is finer than most. It's a nice, it's a really good consistency, and it's gonna work really well for this scale. So I've just grabbed myself a spoon, and what I'm gonna do is just very carefully drop the sand and I can tidy up afterwards so if I make a mess it's okay drop, drop the sand over the top of that bead okay like so there we are and that will mean that when it the PVA dries which it will do quite quickly because it does and I then shake that loose sand away I will have a little dry stone wall, or what will look like a dry stone wall. <clears throat> and the key to this is patience. Once that's dry, I will shake it off. And then what I'll do is I'll do another application. So I'll put another very thin layer, very thin bead of PVA over the top, and then put some more of this uh, level one, number one, uh, two sand on. And then that will, um, that will then build up a slightly higher wall, and I think that'll probably be enough. But maybe three, maybe four, but you just do it in stages. Don't try and get it too tall straight away. <clears throat> Don't worry too much about, um, about that. You're looking at building up several layers of these stones to make a stone wall. So I'm gonna let that go off and pick another section, and um, that I may do some more of exactly the same um, on, the other, on the other fields, um, and I'll be back when there's something new to show you getting towards the end of this, which is very exciting. So, what I'm gonna do is I have my homemade clump foliage, which I will do a video on at some point very soon, but I haven't done yet, but it's made with washing up pads that are whisked up and put in with paint. And I'm gonna put some very small bushes on. I'm not gonna do big lumps. So, all I'm doing here is I have my plate, which has PVA on it, and I'm dipping a lot of PVA onto each clump and then pressing it down like so. And I have two colours, that's what I made to make more than two um, so I can make it a bit more varied like so. And like as you can tell, I'm not really being that worried about tidiness as such. So I'll get that done. I'll either leave the camera running or not, but I'll be back for the next step very shortly.
Okay, I think that's enough. That's going to look really nice. So I'm going to wash my hands and then I'm going to put the two little kiddies running up the hill. Yay! Here we are. Here are the two little kiddies that I painted up. They still have their little slutter bases and that is how I'm going to actually fit them in. So now what I need to do is work out roughly where I actually want them to go. So what I was thinking was, was that the little girl can go somewhere here and the little kitty boy with his wooden sword can kind of go almost facing. So what I'm going to do is I've got my bridle here which is a, which is a knife bridle and I'm going to just press in to make a bit of a hole. Like so. There we are. And that's going to just double check that's wide enough. It is, you see. So what I'll now do, PVA, which I still have from putting the bushes on. Get a good generous amount of PVA and slot him in. Slot him in with his slotter base. There we are. And then I'll do the same for his sister, clearly his sister, who is going to go roughly there. I'm actually in a bit of a quandary at the moment because, oops, it's a bit pushed out right through, but it's fine. Because the spray that I've got for my white glue has actually clogged. So I can't actually apply my sealing layer to this at the moment. I am on the lookout for another spray. So anyway, there we are. We have two little kitties. So let me zoom, let me just change the camera angle slightly and zoom that in for you. So here we are, pretty much the finished article. And if I zoom in, you can see there at the top are the brother and sister. The sister's obviously not very impressed with something the brother's just said. <laughs> And then across here, inside the glass, you've got the couple of skeletons um, underneath the plastic uh, in the burial chamber. And that was basically the image I had when I was, when Rosie came and gave me this tree, or the, the stick, <laughs> that looks so much like an old tree, and the stone that has the white patches in it. So there we are. All I've got to do now is seal it, but as I say, my um, spray has died so I can't use it to seal it so I'm going to work out how to do that um, and once I've worked out I'll, I'll finish it off but that basically is, is done so I'm going to wrap that up there I think I am so pleased that can now go on her wall yay been a while since I've touched this but I have been thinking about it and I have been painting a few bits and pieces just not on camera so the door is now ready to go in so what I'm going to do is I have just spent a little bit of time cleaning and making sure that it opens fine and, and uh, it doesn't have a problem. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click the door surround into place and then I'm going to make use of my Tamiya Extra Thin Cement to actually glue it in. So let's see if we can get that done. I have cleaned it up but it is it has got a lot of had a lot of plaster putting around it so uh, it was a little bit of a faff to get these oh, yeah. so you can see this one's a little bit less good and that's not in properly so let's keep pushing this Okay, I have a little bit more cleaning to do. So I will pause the camera now and I will come back when I've done. Okay, I'll fix that mistake, so that's good. So now what I'm gonna do is get this to my extra thin and just run a bead along the edge, along the top. Sorry for getting my arm in the way. And it can soak down in and glue these things together. So there we are. Next up will be washes and paint and then this project is finished. Yay! So there you have it, another week in the bag. 
Nice varied week. What I'm working towards is clearing my bench. You'll probably notice that I'm trying to finish up quite a few of the projects, having started Joan of Arc, but that's going to take a while. But Rosie's Hill, done. Barlin's Tomb, getting there. And the reason for that is I have a very important build which I'm about to embark upon. Um, I'm doing it in memory of my father, um, and maybe next week you'll get to see that. So yeah, so that's the, that's the thrust at the moment. So anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, if you're not yet subscribed, as I said at the beginning, don't forget to subscribe and ding the bell so that YouTube tells you whenever one of my videos goes live. That we do them every Sunday, which is this video, Tuesday, which is normally a larger video, and Thursday, which is normally a quicker tips video. So that's the regularity of my re releases. I'll finish in a way that I haven't for a while, because I've tidied my sofa so I can sit down again and made a cup of tea for this outro so I can toast you and say thanks so much for watching Beard Clipper and please do stay safe out there. First cup of tea of the day. <laughs>